In the present video, I will be speaking about a very important result in probability theory, the Bayes' theorem. As we can see, this is an application of the formula for the joint probability. And to understand in which moment it will be important to apply these Bayes' theorems, I will be giving you an example. Assume that Alice and Natasha and Juan fill orders in a fast food restaurant. Alex incorrectly fills 20% of the orders he takes. Natasha incorrectly fills 12% of the orders she takes. Juan incorrectly fills 5% of the orders he takes. Alex fills 30% of all orders. Natasha fills 40% of all orders, and Juan fills 25% of all orders. An order has just been filled, and I'm going to ask some questions. Find the probability that the order is incorrect, given that it was filled by Alice, and I'm going to use the letter I for incorrectly filled, and A for the order was filled by Alex. B, find the probability of the order was filled incorrectly, given that the order was filled by Natasha. And find the probability that the order is filled incorrectly, given that the order was filled by Juan. The answer of these questions are given in the information of the problem. For example, this question, the probability that the order is incorrectly given that it was filled by Alex, is given here because they tell me that Alex incorrectly fills 20% of the order he takes. That means if Alex takes an order, he, there is a 20% probability that this order is incorrect. So given that Alice take the orders, there is a 20% probability that it will be filled incorrectly. So I'm going to type this, that the probability of I given A equals 0.20. So the answer of this question is actually given in the problem. Here, for example, the what is the probability that the order is filled incorrectly given that was filled by Natasha? And I notice here that they say that Natasha incorrectly filled 12% of the order she takes. So it means that given that the order was filled by Natasha, the probability that B incorrectly will be 12%. So I'm going to type this that the probability of I given N is equal 0 0.12. And finally, find the probability that the order is filled incorrectly given that was filled by Juan. Is given also here, Juan incorrectly fills 5% of the orders he takes. So the probability of I giving 1 is equal to 0 0.05. We notice here, we can find some probabilities, some conditional probabilities from the information that the problem is giving me. You get another question. And this question is, what is the probability that the order that was filled was incorrectly filled by Alice. So, there is an order now, and we want to know what is the probability that this order is filled incorrectly and also filled by Alice. So in this case, the question is different. The question is, what is the probability of Alice, A, and I? What is the probability that the order was filled by Alice and at the same time was incorrectly filled. So do you, you can type it in this way or this way, you know that it's the same thing. Yes, it's, it's, it's the symbol that we use for and in probability. Okay, if we want to answer these questions, then we need to use the formula of, of joint probability. So and in this formula, remember, is the, prob the probability of A and B equal the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So if I want to answer this question, I'm going to use the probability of A 
times the probability of being incorrect given that was filled by Alex. So I'm actually using here the formula of the joint probability. And then this will be 0 0.30 because they, they tell me here the, in the information that Alex filled 30% of the orders. So the probability that an order is filled by Alex is 30%. Also I know that the probability that the order is incorrect given that was filled by Alice is 0 0.20. So this, I know this information, the only that I need to do is just multiply it, 0 0.06. But what happened is the question is in a different way. So we find the order that was incorrectly filled. So we know now that the order was filled incorrectly. What is the probability that it was filled by Alice? So now it's again, what is the probability that it was filled by Alice? But the probability that the order was filled by Alice is 30%. Yes or not? Yes. But now I will notice that the order is incorrectly filled. Now, maybe now the probability that it was filled by Alice have changed. And we want to know what is this probability. So we want to revise the probability that the order was filled by Alice because now we have more information. Now we know that the order was incorrectly filled. So if we want to do that, now the information is not here. Now the question is what is the probability that the order was filled by Alice given that it was incorrectly. So the, uh, the question gives me some information and they, from this information I could easily find these questions, find these answers. But now there is another question that I cannot answer immediately. So the Bayes theorem is going to tell me how to answer these type of questions when we get this type of questions and we have this type of information. And I'm going to explain what is really the information that we have received in this problem. So this will be the revised probability. We call it in this way, revised probability. The probability like Alice fills 30% of the order, so the probability of the order was filled by Alice is 30%. This is a prior probability. But if the order is filled incorrectly, now we are going to revise this probability to know what is the probability of Alice given I. So let's explain what type of information we have received here and what is this Bayes theorem and how can we apply it to solve the questions. To apply the Bayes theorem, we obviously will need to have a sample space. And in this sample space, we need some events that are exhaustive mutually exclusive events. What does it mean the exhaustive mutually exclusive event? Exhaustive means that the union of all these events complete the whole sample space. And mutually exclusive, we know what, what is that, that, that the, this impossible that the two events, two of these events can happen at the same time. For example, if we find an order, it's impossible that it was filled also but at the same time by Alice and Natasha. It's impossible that the order was filled at the same time by Juan and Natasha. And it's also impossible that it was filled by Alice and Juan. So it always needs to be filled by one of them. And if we, it's easy to recognize that they are mutually exclusive, softly mutually exclusive, because if you add together the probability of A plus the probability of N plus the probability of J, it will be 100%. So they complete 100% of the sample space. So the information of the problem need to give me events like this. And the information of the problem also need to give me another event. Obviously, whatever other event will have an interception with the event that we have at the beginnings because the, the event that we have at the beginning complete the whole sample space. Any other event will have an intersection with, with at least one of them. 
And the event that I'm going to tell you now is to, that the order is filled incorrectly. So the information of the problem give me several sets that are, or several events that are exotic, mutually exclusive, and also another event that can be any, any other event. And what I want to show you is that with this information, I can solve the problem that we have. What is the probability that the order was filled by Alice given that this was filled incorrectly? Let's see. We know if this is I, the incorrectly, and all these form the sample space A, N, and J, then for sure this I will be the union of the A intersection I, because I is going to be intersecting at least one of these events. Maybe there is an A intersection I and a J intersection I. And I know that the probability of the union will be the sum of the probability. So I can find the probability that the order be incorrectly. First. Second, I know the formula that the probability of A and B, so A intersection B, will be the probability of A times the probability of B given A. This is the formula of the, of the joint probability. And obviously, if this is true, then I can solve the equation for P, probability of B given A. So the probability of B given A will be the probability of a and B, and just I just divide by the, by the probability of A, and I get this formula. So this is the formula that helped me to solve the problem. This is actually what I'm going to use to tell you what is the Bayes theorem. So the question is, what is the probability that Alice filled the order, given that was filled incorrectly? So if I use this formula, will be the probability of a intersection i divided by the probability of i. And then what I need to do is just find each of them. So if I know the probabilities of the interceptions, okay, the only that I need to do is just use this probability and divide it by the probability of i. But the probability of i is the sum of all these probabilities. So we know that the probability of i will be the probability of i intersection i, probability of n intersection i, plus the probability of j intersection i. And maybe this is not given in the, for, in, in the information of the problem, but I can find all of them, because they give me information about the probability of a, for example, and they give me the probability of the order being incorrect, given any of the events. So, we know that the probability of A intersection I, using again this formula, look at that, it will be the probability of A times the probability of I given A, the probability of N intersection I will be the probability of N times the probability of I given N, and then again I'm using this formula, and the probability of J intersection I will be the probability of J times the probability of I given J. And all this information they gave us, they give us the conditional probabilities in this way, and they gave me also the probability of A, and the probability of N, and the probability of J. So this is the Bayes theorem, actually. And I'm going to give you this in a general way. But when I do this, so I can put all this here at the bottom, and I have the Bayes theorem. And of course, each of these can be substituted by these products here. Let's do it. Let's show you this in a general way. Assume that we have several events that are mutually exclusive and any other event. So that's what we need to do to state the Bayes theorem. Given a collection of soft mutually exclusive events, let's call it E1, E2, E3, it could be more than three, could be four, could be only two, but could be more than two, it could be three, four, five, etc. etc. And given any other event, let's call it B. Then the revised probability 
of each of these exhaustive mutually exclusive events is given by the probability of EI given B equal to the probability of EI and B divided by the probability of B. And if you see until here, this theorem is just an application of the formula for the conditional probability. So it's better given in this way. So the probability of EI and B is actually the probability of EI times the probability of B given EI. That is the formula for the joint probability that we know. So divided by the probability of B, that is actually the sum of all these joint probabilities. That is actually the probability of these intersections. And in given in this way, is what we call the Bayes theorem. The probability of EI, so the exotic mutually exclusive events that we have at the beginning, will be equal to the probability of these events, and this is, will be the prior probability, multiplied by the probability of B given EI. Another conditional probability another conditional probability that is in a reverse order. You see that this is the probability of EI given B, and this is the o in the reverse order, probability of B given EI. At the bottom, we have the sum of all the joint probabilities of all these, these factors like this. And each factor, which one of these mutually exclusive events. When we have a problem in which we can apply the Bayes theorem, it will be a good idea to use a table to solve it. This is what we call a tabular approach. Remember the formula that we have is something like this. Yes. We need to have the prior probability of all of these exhaustive mutually exclusive events. And we need to have the probability of any event given each of these mutually exclusive events. If we have that, we can make a table like this. In the first column, we can see what are the mutually exclusive events that are very important. Then we can have the prior pro uh, probabilities. Then the conditional probabilities, check that you have all of them and then find the joint probabilities. The joint probabilities, so it's actually the product of these two numbers. So we can use the table to make these products. And then add together all these joints probability because this is the number that will be at the denominator. And finally, just compute the revised probability dividing one of these, depending on the question, one of these joint probabilities because actually what we have at the top is one joint probability. So divide one of the joint probability, depending on the question, obviously, divided by the sum of all the joint probabilities. So we, we were like this. We type all the events. We check if we have all the prior probability of each of them to, to check if these are really mutually exclusive events exotic mutually exclusive events, together, adding together all these numbers, the answer needs to be 100%. So the answer of all these probabilities need to be 1. Then find the conditional probability. So this is also given in the problem. So when you check that you have all the conditional probability of the other event given each of these uh, mutually uh, exotic events. And then, when you have all this, just make the products. Multiply the prior probability times the conditional probabilities. And obviously, the, for example, if the question is related to the second event, you divide this divided by the total number. So you need to add together the joint probabilities. And this is actually the probability of the other event. This is the probability of B. So in case that you are interested in the probability of B, it's just the only thing that you need to do is just add together all these joint probabilities. 
And if the question is what is the probability of E2, the revised probability of E2 given B, for example, then you just need to divide this divided by the sum of all of them. So another way to type this is with the sum at the bottom, for example. This will be another way to type the Bayes theorem. Let's work a problem to see how it works in real life. So let's solve the problems related to these workers that filled the orders in, the, in that restaurant at the beginning. So remember, Alice, Natasha, and Juan filled orders in a fast food restaurant. And we want to know what is this, the revised probabilities? Yeah? Remember all the information that we have, and this is the Bayes theorem. So we have that the probability that the order is incorrect, given that was filled by Alice, was 20%. That was given in the problem. The probability that the order is incorrect, given, given that it was filled by Natasha, it was 0.12%. 12%, sorry. And the probability that the order was filled by was filled incorrectly, given that was filled by Juan, is 0 0.05. So this was given in the problem. Yeah, for example, here Juan incorrectly filled five percent of the orders that he takes. So when when there is an order filled by Juan, there is a five percent probability that it will be incorrect. Okay, and there are more information that they give me. These are the substitute mutually exclusive event. Yeah. So Alice fills 30% of the order, so the probability that the order is filled by Alice is 30%. The probability that Natasha fills an order is 45%, so 0 0.45. And finally, the probability that Juan fills the order is 25%. You need to check that they are really mutually exclusive events. You're adding together, the answer needs to be 100%, and it is, yeah? So then make a table. When you make a table, just type here at the beginning the prior probability. So the probability of each of these events. These are the mutually exhaustive events, the exhaustive mutually exclusive events. Yeah? And let's see, prior probabilities will be the probability of each of them. The probability of Alice 0 0.30, 0 0.45, 0 0.25, and we check that the answer must be one. Then type the conditional probabilities. And the conditional probability of the other event, in this case, our incorrect order, the probability that the order is incorrect given that was filled by Alice. This is 0 0.20, the next one is 0 0.12, and 0 0.5. So type of them. The sum of all of all these numbers doesn't need to be any number, so it could be any of anything here. And then find the joint probabilities. The joint probability is just the product of these two. So 0 0.30 times 0 0.20, 0 0.45 times 0 0.12, 0 0.25 times 0 0.05. So it will be the first one will be 0 0.06, the next one will be 0 0.054, and 0 0.25 times 0 0.05 will be 0 0.0125. Add together all this, the joint probabilities, and when you add together, the answer here 0 0.06 plus 0 0.054 plus 0 0.0125 equals 0 0.1265. And then, depending on the questions, you are going to find the revised probability. For example, here, what is the probability that Alice fill the order? Okay, if I want to find the probability of Alice fill the order, will be the joint probability of Alice divided by the total number of the joint probability. This number here is the probability that the order is filled incorrect. So I now I know that this in this restaurant, 12.65% of the orders are filled incorrectly. Okay, this, then the revised probability will be just probability of the joint the joint probability divided by the sum of the joints probabilities so it will be 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.1265 and that is the number that i'm going to type here yeah so this number at the top is this number here yeah and the number at the bottom 
is the sum of the prob that is at the at the bottom. So divide these two numbers, and the answer is 0 0.4743. So if the order is filled incorrectly, the probability that it was filled by Alice is 47.43%. So it will be very close to 50%. Eh? the probability that is filled by Alex, the order that is incorrect. So let's type the answer here. The probability that the, incor that the incorrectly filled order was filled by Alex is 0 0.4743. Good. What happens if the question is different? What happens, for example, is the what is the probability that one filled the order? Oh, if, if, if you want to know what is the probability that one filled the order, Okay, then you need to use the joint probability for one. The joint probability for one is this. This will be adding together all the numbers. So we know that. So we're going to use again the formula. But now is the probability that one's the one that I'm going to use. Yeah? Probability of one divided by the probability of i given one. This is, this is actually probability of one given that is incorrect. Huh? Okay, so we need to divide this by this. So we have that the number at the bottom, we know that is the, this sum here. And the joint probability for one is this number here. Yeah? And we need to divide these two numbers. If we divide 0 0.02L5 divided by 0 0.12C5, the answer is 0 0.0988. -A. So the probability that the incorrect order was filled by Juan is 0 0.0988. So there is a very a small probability that Juan filled that order. We can find the probability that was this incorrect order was filled by Natasha. If we do that, the answer must be a number that adding together all these three numbers, the answer must be one. So, but it will be a good homework for you to do. Yes, just find the probability of Natasha given that the order was incorrect. And you can check your answer because adding together these three numbers, the answer need to be again one. Okay. And that complete my explanation about this Bayes theorem. Thank you.